Hi YouTube, I'm Rob. In this lesson, I'm going to show you my process of editing my reels. Ready to get started? So now you shot your video, you have a ton of great footage. What next? Editing. To edit my videos, I usually use Premiere Pro. I start by transferring all my footage. Then I sit down with my storyboard and I pick out all the best takes and create a lineup. Some things I usually watch out for when choosing takes is check for pacing, pronunciation, there are no fumbles, my energy, there are no audio glitches. And once I have all the best takes, then I cut to music or if I'm using a view, like in this case, then cut it to the view. So here I have my fully edited reel. So I thought I'll take you guys to the edit and I'll show you guys why I made certain choices. So here you can see the first shot where I take out this little roll of paper from my ear. Looks pretty nice. This is the line where I say, Hi, I am Rob. So the audience is not expecting something coming out of my ear. A very simple shot, just two takes, where I took one shot without the roll and the second one I edited it and it creates a perfect illusion, like the roll is coming out of my ear. And I open it and you can see, that's my name on it. I crush the paper and I slam it on the table and all my materials and my tools come out, just like that. This was a simple stop motion. As you can see, there aren't that many frames and in just few frames, you can create a cool effect like this. Now I'm gonna show you another fun section of this video. This part where I change my hoodies and my snapbacks. Though there is a track playing in the background that complements the video or the visual, I added a sound effect from like a, a retro video game that makes it even more interesting. Did you see that? It's going... <laughs> and you can see that that sound effect amplifies the whole effect of the visual. When you're looking for sound effects and you don't find any, you can create your own. Most of the times I create my own sounds and just record them on my phone. This crushing sound is just a piece of paper. Similarly, towards the end. You heard that? When I'm pointing, it goes. So again, I just create these sounds uh, using my mouth. And I think it's very important. Particularly in this shot, there are only these tiny buttons appearing, which are my earrings. And something so small in the video, people can sort of miss out. But adding that sound effect makes it stand out and you notice something is happening in the frame. Now here's a trick. If you see, this transition is very smooth. I'm in my studio and I snap and I'm in an exterior shot. I'm pretty much in the same sort of pose. And every time I'm doing transitions like this, I take a whiteboard marker and I draw a simple outline and just mark my pose. So when I go to the next location, I pretty much stand in the same kind of pose and my transition always comes out pretty smooth. Look at that. And while you're shooting, you always have to keep your edit in mind. And now we have come to the last bit of my video. Usually I have like a surprise element at the end and that's exactly what I planned for this video too. Watch this. You never had, you have to do something you never did. You have to do something you never did. Cool, right? So it's always nice to leave your audience on a high note. I also now have a loop at the end. So my last shot, where I blow the balloon and I say thank you to my audience. I cover most of my screen, which acts like a good transition wipe that helps me go back to my first frame and loop the video just like this. There you go. So you can plan these little things for your videos to make them more exciting so that your audience wants to watch them again and again. And when my edit is done, uh, it's time to review the edit. I review it a couple of times to see everything is flowing fine. All the shots are laid out properly. It's syncing to music or my VO. And after that, I shut down the laptop and take some time off. And then I come back and review it again with a fresh mind, with a fresh perspective and see if everything is still fine or if it requires any tweaking. When you are reviewing the edit, a certain amount of detachment is very important. It doesn't matter if you spend four hours or five hours shooting it. If it's too long, if the pace is not working, the action is not right, you have to cut it out. You have to only pick what works for the video. Another thing that can help you review your edit is once you're done with it, show it to a friend who doesn't know what the video is about and see whether the video is communicating the right message or not. If they feel that it's fine, then you have done your job right. 
If not, then you have to get back to the edit table and make the changes. I don't use text in my videos, but whenever I do, I try and cut it to music. For example, like this. Who am I in 30 seconds? Audience always is listening and viewing at the same time. When your text or your visual is synced to music, it stands out even better. I keep it for at least three to four seconds because it takes that much time for a person to register what's written. If you have longer lines, then you'll have to give it a little more time so it's legible. But around three to four seconds works best. And I try and keep my text bold, my message simple because people are watching videos. They don't want to read too much. Most of the information, I put it in my captions. So my videos are pretty much clean and the text is minimal. So as you can see, my reel is pretty fast paced and that's because people consume reels for purely entertainment. They're scrolling through different videos and they'll only stop if something really catches their eye. So my colors are pretty bright and poppy. My pace is pretty fast. The music I choose is also pretty trendy. So all these things are very important to make a good reel. And all these decisions are based on the platform you're putting your video on. My YouTube videos, don't have the same pace because they are instructional videos, they are DIY videos and tutorials. So the pace is slightly slower because I want to give people more time to understand what I'm doing. So be a little mindful of that. When it comes to optimization, every creator has their own take. I personally don't like using the same footage I've shot for one platform on another. I think it really messes with the quality of the video. Like when you see a small tiny square in a vertical format. I used to do this earlier, but I myself didn't enjoy watching videos like that. I didn't want to make videos like that because it was easy and ruined someone's viewing experience. But when you want to do that, to save time, for example, shoot it, compose your shots in such a way that it would work for both edits. It will take you some extra time to plan it, but I really think it's worth it. Now, a lot of people like to play around on the edit table, move their footage or their shots and place them differently from what was planned earlier. I don't like to do that. That's why I make a storyboard because that's what my vision is. That's what my flow is. And once I stick to the board, my edit becomes fairly easier. If something is not working, then I'll definitely move it around. But I don't like playing so much on the edit table. Your student exercise for this lesson is to edit your video for your chosen platform. Try out some of the tips and tricks that we discussed today in the lesson. I promise you it'll help you a lot. Thanks for joining me for this lesson. This was one part of my Making Creativity Your Career class on Skillshare. Join me in the full class to learn how to create amazing reels or YouTube videos. Click on the link below. I can't wait to see you there. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all of our latest videos.